In today's climate, nothing will make you a more accurate or confident shooter than Crimson Trace laser sighting systems. Get the immediate, decisive advantage of the world's only grip-integrated laser sights today. Shoot better. Stay safer. Crimson Trace. This week on Gun Talk, it's a special after-show edition of Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Frankly, we're humbled by how many folks have downloaded this part of the show. So we threw together a montage of after-show segments for you to enjoy this weekend. No need to call because we're all still asleep after eating too much turkey. Now here's Tom and the whole Gun Talk Bunch. Enjoy. You now entered this weird place that we call the after show. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's already getting weird. I mean, just just like that. Here we are. We got uh, Michael, Michelle, and Jim all uh, online. You guys all here? No, nope. we're here. Nope, nope. No, nobody. Oh, nobody just here me. but us chickens. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just you. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what, Michelle? If you're here, I don't actually care if they're here. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, it's going to be a good after show if she's here. I'm glad you said that out loud. <laughs> it was just in my head before. Oh, the voice is in your head again. Yes, okay. Oh, you need help. I like that. I like a bumper sticker that says, yes, I do listen to the voices in my head. That's right. So, you know, it's the twitch that concerns us mostly, Michelle. <laughs> That's right. Thanks. It's, it'll get that little thing going there. It's okay. Yeah, medication, that helps. <laughs> well, did we stir up a, a little bit of a hornet's nest today? Yeah. Yeah, apparently you didn't spray it first either. Yeah, that no, was yeah, awesome. Spray it. <laughs> I felt like in the middle of it that... People were projecting all over the place and not hearing what I was saying. I mean, was I not saying it well or what? I thought you said it. You got your point across fine. I actually thought the guy from New York had a valid point about, you know, grouping it together. And I understood where he was coming from. I think you both had valid points. It's just I don't think you're on the same argument page. Yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about who you vote for. I'm talking about using terms that alienate people who would like to work on your side. That's all I was talking about, is just the terms we use. Because you know me, I'm all about messaging. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, I'd like the term anti-gunners. I like to use the term pro-vulnerableists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just I mean, runs trippingly yeah, I, off the tongue, Yes, it's it? just so smooth. But think about it. I mean, you say somebody's anti gun it automatically puts them in negative, which they are, but it puts them in negative anyway. If you say, you know, they're pro-defenselessness, well, what do you mean by that? Yeah, that opens up a conversation. Yeah, I know. I, I guess, but what I'm saying is there are people out there who want to help. They want to work with us. We, you know, we had uh, Rick from... Ar- was it Arkansas? Yeah. I uh, was called in saying that he says, look, he says, I'm black, I'm liberal, and I'm a gun guy. I shoot, and I'm pro on gun rights. And I, I just can't tell you guys how many people I have had email me or come up to me and say, you know, I, I want to be a part of the, this community, but boy, you know, I, I walk in there and and you've heard it. You guys talk about, yeah, those aren't liberals, those liberals this, those liberals that. Yep, and the yep. guy standing there is thinking, they're talking about me, and I'm here at the shooting range with them. It, it just, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I've had my say on that. Do you remember the All in the Family scene where uh, Archie had a heart attack and Meathead was giving him mouth-to-mouth resuscitation? Oh, not Meathead, I'm sorry. And a, uh, a black guy was giving him um, oh, yeah, mouth-to-mouth yeah, yeah. resuscitation. And he came to, and he said, I wish you would let me die. In a yeah, way, in a way, it's the kind of same thing. I mean, if you're stuck on the side of the road, are you not going to have somebody give you a lift or help you out because he's Asian? I mean, come on. So it's it's an interesting parallel. You say, you know, I'm so hung up on my labels that I won't take your help. They're prejudiced, really. They're not just labels. Well, that's, that's what I say. I say, you know, there's nothing as warm and comforting as a strongly held prejudice. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. yeah. We just need to focus on what the motivation is. And the motivation is the right to be able to own the firearms, which shouldn't even be up for debate anyways. Right. Of course, my motivation is to get as many people as I can helping us because it is a numbers game. It is. I mean, if we can move the needle, as I've said many times, if we can move the needle two or three clicks of public opinion, we win. So, Michael, what you been doing? You been shooting it all this week? Uh, yeah, actually, I went out this morning. Uh, we had a class, and I was, uh, I was doing some instruction, and we got to get out and shoot my new shotgun that I destroyed last week. And <laughs> what? 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 What I, happened? I bought a new shotgun, and I did not read whatever cleaning product I decided to use as label properly, and <laughs> oh, melted no. the magazine follower inside the magazine tube. What did you spray on? Powder there? blaster. 
I thought it was something else. I think, <laughs> but uh, I had a heck so of a time So it's a getting really that. strong solvent. It, it just melted the plastic. It is. Yeah, I had to uh, replace it with an aluminum uh, follower and a new spring. And, but the biggest problem was getting the old gunky plastic out of the inside of the magazine tube. <laughs> I had to use a dowel <laughs> rod, and <laughs> I now, taped a what, bunch what, of... <laughs> was this something made for guns? Yeah. It's called Powder Blaster? Yeah. So it's actually a like a brake cleaner kind of super solvent. Yeah, and the reason I was using it is because the gun was shipped with so much like uh, really greasy cosmoline type stuff, right. and it was all up inside the mag tube. And every round I would eject, it would be coated with this stuff. Oh, so yeah. I was like, well, this has got to be cleaned, you know? Mm-hmm, sure. But uh, wow. Uh, yeah. So at least it works, and it was only like a twenty dollar fix. So that's well, good. Some, sometimes we have to pay for our education, you know. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it looks like we got John from Longview, Texas. He is, uh, let's see, on line one, I believe. I think Jim, he stole my word. That, that NRA commercial, they could have went off with uh, anti-gun activists instead of instead of liberal. Mm-hmm. You know, they could have used that. And I think, I think everybody was hearing what you were saying, but they weren't listening to what you were saying. It's your God-given right to... Keep and bear arms, protect you and your family. I think you're exactly right. It was it existed and, before there was a Second Amendment. And and like Rick in Little Rock said he was a liberal, but he he is a gun owner and supports the NRA. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like uh, defending a ship. You know, you're defending your ship, and somebody's on the ship willing to help. And you don't believe in what they believe in, but they're wanting to help you keep the ship. Why would you refuse their help? Once you yeah. get back to land or wherever you're going, you can go your separate ways or whatever. Actually, I think that is a beautiful analogy because we're on the ship. We're going to defend the ship. We're going to help it. And then when we get back you know, to wherever we're going, we don't have to be the best of friends on everything else. We just go out. Uh, or if you know, your house is on fire and some kind of, somebody helps you put out the fire, you may not end up being the best of friends with them on everything else. But, man, you sure do appreciate the help at the time. Yeah, and they and they leave and go their own way and never see them again, maybe or maybe not. You know. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think a lot of I think a lot of that. What I was hearing is people wanting to defend or or talk about other issues instead of just defending the gun rights. You well, you gotta, no, I think I gotta, think you're exactly right. I, I think that's exactly right. And, and look, I appreciate the call, John. I, I, and that was my my point. I was trying to make, and evidently not very well, guys, is that <laughs> we can't get bogged down in the other issues. People want to say, yeah, but he didn't support whatever, or he supports gay rights, or he supports abortion, or she supports, and to which I always just say yes, and I don't care. You know, I really, you know, if you want to fight him on that. And that's your issue? Go fight them on that. Great. It's not my issue. My issue is guns. And if I can get somebody's help on guns, I don't need a package deal. I guess maybe that's... Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, well, you know what I was thinking? Take it a step further. Go with the stereotypes for a second, okay? Okay. Go with the liberals that hate... You know, they all hate guns. All of them have to, right? Okay. And they're all pro-abortion. Sure. Sure they are. Well... Let's say that that's you know you're you're a gunny like us, and the abortion thing doesn't sit in your crop properly. If you can spark conversation and get these people to help you on the things you do agree with, guns for example, on a, a liberal pro gun person, you don't think that develops that relationship develops, and as time goes on, if they're voting for somebody who is pro abortion like they are, but anti gun. You don't think that would hold some some weight there when and, and affect their voting? Take it a step further. Uh, who, if you had somebody, and I'm not talking about voting for people who you you, know, you really hate their ideas, mm-hmm. but if you had somebody on your side, who, somebody you met at the shooting range, a Rick, you know, and you say, okay, look, I know Rick, you and I don't agree on these other issues, but we're we're good on guns. Who would be more effective talking to an elected official who is self-identified as liberal? You or Rick? Oh, sure. Yeah, so I, I, we need Rick working with us on mm-hmm. this thing because he's going to be able to go and say, look, I'm with you on this. But, man, I'm just telling you, you need to listen to me on the gun issue because, you know, I'm with you on abortion. I'm with you on whatever. Pick up an issue. But we also need to talk about guns because you're going lockstep on this and you really don't need to be there. And they're, I think they're probably more likely to listen to Rick than yeah, they are absolutely. to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how many other Ricks have we kept out of the room because of that label that we want to focus on. You know, they bring lots of other people with them if we let them in. 
Well, that's just it. If you make them feel uncomfortable, and only by the choice of our words. Clearly remember, I was at the Gun Rights Policy Conference, and I'm walking by these groups, and it's like you can't even go through a, a group of people who are standing around talking about guns without them railing against liberals. And I had a, I went ahead and made my little speech, and then I had two or three of them, people come up to me and say, you know, I'm really glad you said that, because... I'm here to support gun rights. This is people who spent their money. They made the trip. They're there to support gun rights. And they're saying, but I really don't feel comfortable because everywhere I go, people are just bad mouth and liberals, and I'm a liberal. And I'm thinking, well, there it is. I mean, that's the whole deal. And it just keeps coming up over and over again. I just keep thinking, man, we can't afford to throw away any help we can get from any direction. The rest of it, I don't care about. Yep. I, just, I just don't. Tell you what, let's take a quick break. I want to get back. We got uh, Jim and Stephen uh, waiting for us. We'll get to those guys. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. In the field or on the range, you need a trigger you can trust. For over 60 years, Timney triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. A Timney trigger could mean the difference between a great shot and a miss. Timney Triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. To order, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsman.org. That's ussportsman.org. Hey everyone, I'm Doug Koenig, winner of more than 60 national and world shooting championships. You know what? I'm here to tell you that the only thing I like better than competitive matches with high-powered pistols and better than hunting big white-tailed deer is watching NRA Freedom Friday presented by Cheaper Than Dirt on the Pursuit Channel. It's true what they say. Pursuit Channel delivers the outdoors. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry 1. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. The new Walther PPX offers a smooth trigger, ambidextrous magazine release, three integral safeties, rugged construction, and the famous Walther ergonomic grip. All this at a great price. Right now, get a free magazine, holster, and dual mag pouch when you purchase a PPX. Feel the perfect fit of the Walther PPX at your local gun dealer or go to WalthurArms.com for more information. That's WalthurArms.com. You're listening to our Gun Talk After Show Thanksgiving Special. So sit back, loosen that belt, and enjoy. Once again, here's Tom and the Gun Talk staff. 
All right, we're back. I tell you what, let's go straight to the phones. Uh, Stephen is with us out of Kathleen, Georgia. Hey, Stephen, how are you? I'm doing quite well. Good deals. What's this? You had some heart surgery? I did. Uh, and essentially, this was about five months ago. Okay. Well, what would you have done? I had a valve replaced, the aortic right. valve. Okay. So how, how did that affect your shooting? Well, I guess... My heart now beats so strongly that it actually shakes my upper body. Darn it. Tell them to dial that thing back. I want a heart that doesn't beat. <laughs> no, no, so no, 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 no. Life's too good like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. And so when I'm looking through a scope on a rifle, mm-hmm. it wiggles. Everything wiggles. Yep. And... I can even, if I fire enough rounds, I can even get a pattern. If you think of a piece of notebook paper, mm-hmm. the pattern goes from uh, top right-hand side to bottom left-hand side through the bullseye. Do you shoot right-handed? I do. Okay. So you're getting a vertical string, top right to bottom left. Mm-hmm. Now, is this, is this when you're shooting off a bench or shooting off hand? Yeah. Yes, it's shooting off a rest. Off a rest. O- uh, off like- a uh, sandbag. Sandbags. Interesting. Um, well, let me ask you, do you have a sandbag on the back of the rifle as well as the front? No. Okay, there's a problem. When you're shooting off a bench, you got to have sandbags on front and back. Okay. Because that eliminates that whole thing, because you should be able to shoot itty-bitty groups, but there should be a sandbag under the butt of the rifle. Now, let me describe this, and you'll, you'll get this figured out real quickly. Your right hand stays on the grip of the gun, and your left hand goes underneath your armpit. And it is actually holding, squeezing the sandbag that's holding up the back or the toe of the gun, the butt back there. And so what you do is you squeeze or release the pressure on that sandbag with your left hand, and it will raise and lower the back of the gun, the butt of the gun, which will raise and lower the crosshairs. And you get just with a little bit of pressure, squeeze it, it goes up, you release it, it goes back down. And if you've got uh, a rest front and back, you'll be able to shoot nice small groups. There, there's really no way to shoot good groups without supporting it both front and back. Okay. Okay, but let me. I'm going to go on a little bit further. That shake that you're seeing is a okay, and it's not going to affect you in terms of. Do you shoot? For, are you getting ready to go hunting? Is that what you primarily well, yeah, do? Yeah, I'm. I'm doing pest control, mainly gray squirrels. Gotcha. Okay. There's a secret here that a lot of people, when they're shooting off the bench, they want the gun to be perfectly still, and we do when we're sighting in, but then when they start shooting offhand, the rifle is wiggling around or shooting off of sticks or whatever, and they're waiting and waiting and waiting for the wiggle to stop. Well, it never is going to stop because we are this quivering mass of protoplasm trying to hold up this rifle and yeah, like you say, you got breathing going on, you got your heart rate going on, you got, you know, and we're just generally unsteady anyway. But if you would just let the crosshairs drift, they almost will kind of form like a figure eight or a circle, and just keep pressing the trigger. It's like this weird Zen kind of thing. The bullet will go where it's supposed to go. It doesn't look like it's going to. Let it wiggle. Just keep pressing the trigger. Do not try to time the shot and yank it at exactly the right time. That's That'll guarantee a miss. Just press it off. Try it on target. See how it works for you. I think you'll find that if you just keep, don't try to yank, just press, 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 and just let it go off as you get a wiggle, uh, you're going to find you're going to actually shoot pretty well. Okay. So how how you doing after the surgery? Very good. It, it's a whole new world. Um, yeah, I it was happened darn sl- thick. And it happened slowly. You just get weaker and weaker. And yes. were you were you getting yes. like the uh, fatigue and uh, out of breath that kind of uh, yes. symptoms? Yes. Yes. Yep. And it, it's amazing. I, I didn't know how sick I was until I got better. Exactly. The other thing that happens that may have happened to you is I have seen it where people get a lot more susceptible to overheating. The heat really gets to them when they have uh, either bypass or heart valve issues. I haven't noticed that. Okay, that was before. And, and it's you, pretty hot right here in Georgia, right? Yeah, now. no, I mean, but before the surgery, afterwards oh, you should oh. be good to go. I see. Well, good for you. Congratulations. I'm I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. 
Well, it it really is amazing the difference. I, I'm <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Well, good deal. Hey, you sound like you had some good doctors and uh, you're doing your follow-up. But, yeah, try those techniques on shooting. I think that's going to work for you. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate the call. <sighs> Boy, it's true. I mean, sometimes you uh, you get worse so gradually you don't even know it until you get better. And you go, wow, I really was kind of bad off there. I, you know, I just recently lost a whole bunch of weight, and I, I ran yesterday for the first time in like five years, and I couldn't even have done it up and down steps you know, seven months ago. And I felt great afterwards. I'm like, what the heck? Especially with that TV under your arm. Yeah, I two guys chasing <laughs> Hey, they've gotten lighter now. <laughs> you guys remind me of, of that woman that said, yeah, I lost uh, 180 pounds of unsightly flab. I don't know where he is now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I don't think Michelle liked that. Michelle's ever going, you guys. Actually, you actually kind of identify with that, sir. Anyway... <laughs> Do we still have Jim, or did he get tired of waiting on us? Uh, he's still blinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to the blinking Jim. He's got something on in his line eye, I believe. Too, yeah. Hey, Jim, you still there, man? Yes, I am. Okay, good deal. Help me out here, because I honestly, I'd never heard of fluid film. You been using it? Oh, yeah, for many years. Um, it was originally introduced to me when I used to listen to Johnny Rowland on his old shooting show. Sure, yeah. He used port. to sell it. So oh. I bought a bunch of it. Still got some of it left. Um, it's a real good product. It's been around a long time. How do you and use it? What, what do you do with it? It's particularly good for guns uh, mm-hmm. in a hot, humid climate. Hmm. The best way to use it, what I would tell people, is to uh, field strip the gun, uh, whether it's a rifle or a handgun. Uh, remove any optics and uh, it's a good idea probably to remove the stock even though it won't hurt uh, stock finishes Uh, but mainly so that you can get the the film on the uh, undersides of the metal parts where the uh, rust tends to happen anyway right hey hold that thought and uh, we'll pick it up on the back side of this break Have you taken your family, friends, and kids shooting lately? You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to our Gun Talk After Show Special. We've put together some after show highlights for you to enjoy this Thanksgiving weekend while we spend time with our families. No need to call today, but next week, of course, you can get back on the air with Tom. Happy Thanksgiving from all of us at Gun Talk and the Gun Talk After Show. All right, we're talking to caller Jim. He's talking about a product called Fluid Film. Jim, go ahead. As you were saying, the. Uh barreled action, say, of a, a rifle on uh, a towel or something and spray it down liberally with the stuff from a spray can, uh, which is the way I got the product anyway. Okay. And um, let it uh, soak for a few minutes. Then uh, what I would do in my shop, I have uh, compressed air, and I would just uh, blow it dry with air pressure and then use a shop rag and uh, clean off any any liquid uh, on the exterior surfaces and then set the gun aside for a half an hour or so for everything to dry. Mm-hmm. Then it's ready to reassemble, and you can store it without any concern about corrosion or rust. Huh. Do you have to strip it before you apply this? You don't really have to, but I think it's best to get a good coating of all the internal parts. I wouldn't spray it inside the bolt, for example. It's not necessary, but uh, just inside the bolt way, it won't hurt the bore. Mainly, you want to get it on all the external finished surfaces. And um, once you wipe it down, it dries to a film you can't detect by touch. Ah, that's what I was going to ask you, if it's greasy or anything. Yeah. And it should not in any way interfere with the action of any type of semi-automatic. Hmm. Uh, it's an old product, and that's the proper way to use it, and it, it definitely works. It does contain a lot of lanolin. You can tell by the odor. Oh, okay. So you end up smelling like a wet sheep. <laughs> well, it's not too unpleasant. <laughs> 
All right. Well, look, I appreciate the report on that. I had not heard of that before, but uh, sounds like we got some good reports from people. It's been working for a long time because this is, as you say, I looked and it's uh, been around a long time anyway. I'm a former uh, uh, bench rest competitor. I'm a retired engineer. I study technical ballistics. Uh, like I say, I'm interested in extreme rifle precision and advancing the state of the art in that field. I, th- I think I'm familiar with your work. I've, I've written uh, many articles for Precision Shooting Magazine yes. over the years, the former Precision Shooting Magazine. Right, right, right. Jim Boatwright. Yeah, I'm a friend of uh, Mick McPherson, um, uh, Cortez, Colorado, gun writer. I heard you interview him about a new his new uh, book, weeks ago right well, have, you know, by the way. And, and if uh, if you tell me you've been using fluid film then that uh, adds a lot more credence to it because I, i'm familiar with your background and your reputation that means a lot so you know what this means it means i gotta go out and buy some of this stuff you know, <laughs> and try it i can say i'm interested in advancing the state of the art uh, in particular for long range uh, rifle shooting Yep, I understand. Listen, I've got a scoot, Jim. I appreciate the call, and uh, thank you for doing the, the work on that testing. And pretty cool. Uh, fluid film. Had, had you guys ever heard of fluid film before? Never. Never. Nope. Isn't that interesting? None of us had heard of that before. And it sounds like it's been out because it's, like, it's available like at Tractor Supply and Granger and places like that. Uh, they've even got like an undercoating system where you can uh, spray it. You know, the way you would uh, corrosion protection stuff. Hmm. So you could get it into, well, I don't know, tractors or whatever. It sounds like an awesome product. How could anything that old actually work, though? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Exactly. Tom's still yeah. working. <laughs> oh, I oh, oh, no. Ouch, man. Let me reach back here behind myself and pull this dagger out of my back. Oh, man. Join us on next week's after show when Jim, Michael, and Tom only discuss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or, or maybe it's just going to be Michelle, because you know, after you got me, guys, you better be watching yourselves. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I got to ask you guys, did you did you watch the uh, the Ice Bucket Challenge we did? Yes. Yeah. It was cool. The thermal thermal photography was great. The thermal was fun. Uh, that was kind of all, I mean, it's silly, but we're sitting there, we've got this gear in the office, and I can't remember if it was uh, Ryan or Sarah said, well, why don't we do the thermal? I said, yeah, we got this $9,000 thermal scope here. <laughs> yeah. And we got to send it back next week, so let's go do something with it. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> and I advise anybody who hasn't seen to check it out. I'm, so it's on, it's uh, on YouTube, YouTube. Just yeah. uh, do the search for Gun Talk Ice Bucket, and that'll, it'll show up that way. Cool. So there you go. We are in the process. It's, this is the weird part of the year for us. You know, we get all these guns in and use them for the TV shows, and now we're in the send it back phases. And it's except, kind of weird. Except the, the M and P twenty two. You're not sending that back. Yeah, that was not going back. And actually, <laughs> pr- maybe except some other stuff. I went by and looked at a stack of them. They're going back. I go, what is? Wait, what is that? And do we have to send that back? And mm-hmm. okay, ask them how much it's going to cost us to keep that one. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's what I need. I need one more nine millimeter pistol. That makes all <laughs> the sense in the world, right? Maybe, maybe a striker fire one this time. <laughs> Hang on a second, guys. Let's uh, let's take a quick break here, and then we'll continue this fiasco in just a bit. In today's climate, you always need to be ready. Nothing will make you a more accurate or confident shooter than Crimson Trace laser sighting systems. Get the immediate, decisive advantage of the world's only grip-integrated laser sights. Shoot better. Stay safer. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge. Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. 
We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the delta, but we need your help. Please visit vanishingparadise.org. That's vanishingparadise.org. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups, shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. The Ruger LCRX is a variation of the LCR that features an external hammer allowing it to be fired in single action mode. The LCRX can also be fired in double action mode. It features a monolithic frame made from aerospace grade 7000 series aluminum, a patented Ruger friction reducing cam that results in a smooth, non-stacking trigger pull, and a patent pending polymer fire control housing that significantly reduces weight and helps reduce recoil. The Ruger LCRX Revolver, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. TopGunSupply.com carries a large selection of fine firearms and accessories. Get all the parts you need for your Sig Sauer, HK, and Glock pistols. Grips, screws, recoil springs, sights, barrels, magazines, holsters. The list goes on. Our knowledgeable sales staff, professional service, great prices, and super fast shipping are here to help you. Check us out today. TopGunSupply.com. TopGunSupply.com. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours from Gun Talk and the Gun Talk After Show. Now, once again, Tom Gresham and the Gun Talk staff with more of our After Show special. All right, welcome back. We're talking about pump-action guns, and I wonder, has anybody ever made a pump-action pistol? Well, you know, not maybe an air gun. I mean, oh, pistol. oh, oh, speaking of air guns, I found an old air pistol and cleaning out some stuff. And I don't. It probably isn't going to work because this thing is like old, old. But well, it's got old air in it. You got to. It's get got old that. air. That's right. You know. So you got to put some fresh air in it. But <laughs> I've got. I got a raccoon problem. Ooh. And pretty soon they're going to have a tom problem because uh. these guys are all over the yard and they're. And my neighbor's saying, "Have you been seeing all these raccoons?" Like, yeah. We got to do something about this. So it may be, and I've been putting it off because I I know what's going to happen if I get into these really nice adult air guns. <laughs> I, that's what I need is another hobby. We're gonna have two after shows. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but man, they're making some great uh, air guns now. They even have them that come with integral silencers. You, you guys familiar with that? Yeah, I've seen it. What I like is you can get them modeled after popular firearms, so you mm-hmm. can actually extend your training to the point where when you're firing it, you're, you know, training. Oh, exactly so that was, right. That was articulate. <laughs> <laughs> you well, just I, have a way with words there, big boy. <laughs> I, think it's funny. I think it's funny the people that scoff at air guns, because they've got some, you know, what, two 2,500 FPS on oh. some of these suckers now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're, they're like Screaming. 22s or, or beyond. Yeah. You can get them at Walmart. It's nuts. Okay, well, there you go. There's then there's a Walmart near everyone. So. All right, now, further question here, Tom, to, yes. to vet this out a little bit. BB or pellet? Well, pe- mm. pellet. The BB, um, the thing is you need a rifled barrel. Traditionally, BB guns had smoothbore uh, right. barrels. Right. And they were okay, but they were up close. But if you want accuracy, you've got to have a rifle barrel. And at that point, you're going to be shooting pellets and... So then the question becomes, you're looking at uh, 177 caliber and 22 caliber, and now they've got him up to, like, Crossman. Was it Crossman? Had a 357. You're basically shooting 357 bullets wow. out of a, an air gun. And, I mean, they're killing hogs mm-hmm. with these things. And it's not a firearm. And it's not a firearm. Mm. Now, the deal is with the silencer, uh, what the experts tell me is that it can't be removable because then it falls under the NFA regs. But if it's integral, then it's not a silencer. It's just part of this air gun, which, as you say, is not a firearm. So, hmm. all sound. Because when you get something that's going better than 1,100 feet per second, now you're getting a sonic crack and a lot of air sound. So, you a little bit of a silencer wouldn't hurt. So, oh, no, anyway, my, my neighbor, my neighbor, nice couple of ladies over there, they said, now, if you hear a really loud boom, 
I mean, yeah, okay, but ladies, look, the woods are over that way, so keep it pointed over toward the woods, okay? And I'll know that Rocky Raccoon has bitten the dust when it gets, <laughs> comes time. Do you remember those old, the uh, the little miniature darts you could shoot out of an air rifle? You know, I do. I'm I'm old enough to remember those yeah, things. I just too. dated myself. You can today. still find those. I've seen them around. Well, sir, I think Tom should do is get one of those and, and integrate it with a, a fishing system so he can shoot the raccoon, hook it, and then reel it reel in it on the line. Oh. You laugh. Okay. Story time. <laughs> I'm a kid. We're out. We're doing a lot of bow fishing. We shoot these fish with this arrow, a big solid uh, fiberglass arrow with a string on it. You pull it back in. Right. So, you know, I grew up on the water on a lake. So we went out at night, a buddy of mine and I. And so we shot a nutria with this. Now, a nutria, for those who don't know, is about a 25 pound rat. <laughs> So where I'm going is connecting to that, the idea of shooting a raccoon with something where you got to bring it back in. Yeah, bad move. I nailed this nutria just under the skin. Oh. So he, he's not really hurt, but he's really, really unhappy with me. <laughs> and I'm pulling him back into the boat. So we got this rat <laughs> who is really ticked off, and I'm about 15 years old. But I have forethought. I have planned this out. <laughs> so I have one of those souvenir that you get at the ball game, Louisville Sluggers. It's about a foot long. Oh, yeah. And it's me, the rat, and the bat. <laughs> and we're going to town in the night in this boat. <laughs> <laughs> that I'd and, like to see on thermal. <laughs> and you know, who, you know who won? Because it's not called rat talk. <laughs> So, no, we're not shooting raccoons with anything that has a string on it, because no I don't want him coming back at me. No retrieval. <laughs> no retrieval here. Yeah. No siree. Well, just a little what? word to the wise. I was attacked by a raccoon once. Were you really? Yeah, and I smacked him. I was digging. I was I was actually building a studio years ago, and uh, he snuck up behind me and started making hissing noise and stuff. So I thought, well, I got a shovel in my hand. That'll dissuade him. Nope. No, nope, their heads are really hard. Yeah, they, <laughs> if you hit them in the snout, I learned from somebody later, you can disable them. But if you just smack across the head, they're going to laugh at you and attack you. I well, the, used to live at a Boy Scout camp when I was actually an instructor, uh, and we had a real bad raccoon problem around the garbage uh, cans, and they would in group attack us, like chase you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, at the point, we couldn't have any firearms or anything. You know, we were doing bow. So I ended up having to take the bow back to my cabin just to, you know, get back there. And I was shooting, you know, stakes and stuff at them so they'd leave me alone. It was nuts. Yeah, what could go wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, you got any raccoon or rat stories? No. <laughs> no, nothing that can live up to these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, the thing about raccoons, too, is that uh, they can become rabid. Yes. Exactly. And so, you know, there's an issue there, too. We got a lot of dogs and kids running around the neighborhood. So, no, Raccoon no. talk, rat talk. We got a lot of opportunities <clears throat> here. You know, we're, we're, they call that a line extension. We're going to do uh, more shows. Right. <laughs> and, uh, so th there you go. Spinoff. Spinoffs, that's right. So there you go. You know, and once again, we spin to some place that's very weird. I don't know how it is. We always end up at this weird place. Consistency? <laughs> Practice. Practice. Yeah, Mental we, we fortitude. We weren't born idiots. We had to work at it to perfect you know, this. I, I think what actually amounts to is that we're able to hide it for only so long. <laughs> and, and then the real us You're comes right. out. It was just a matter of time before. That's right. That's right. It's finally, it's just gone. It evaporates. Well, so Michelle's this, really this, the only person that gets to talk to anybody out in the outside public. Jim and I just look at each other and we're like, mm -hmm, wait for the after show so we can talk. <laughs> there, there's a reason yeah. to make you audio guys hang around in little dark rooms and not talk to people. You know that. <laughs> keep you? glass between us. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, everybody, don't go anywhere. We're going to take care of a little business and then we'll be right back. You don't have to agree with Tom to participate in the show. Call now with any of your concerns about guns, gun rights, or particular firearms, or suggestions for your shooting activity or personal protection. 1-866-825-5486. Gun Talk is coming right back. And we made it back. I do want to ask you guys, 
uh, we, I mean, we had really the giants. We had Gottlieb and Gura on, our, our two Alan G guys on. And every time I hear them, I just think I'm so impressed with what they do. And I know I'm, you know, I'm a gun rights geek, but I'm just kind of wanting to know how does all this hit you when we hear all this great news? I was like a kid in a candy store today because I've, I've dealt with a lot of celebrities over the past through the show and other work I do, and I don't get real smitten. It's just, it's, you know, you keep your wits about you, you're polite and you're professional, you move on. Both these guys, I had a, said, hey, I'm giving you a, a digital high five, guys. It was great just, just being able to speak with these guys and off air, give them a high five and tell them thanks for everything you do, and it's tremendous. I mean, these, these guys are in the trenches it's it's these are people you read about and and do internet stuff on and you hear these guys and actually physically be able to speak to them and then they said we got to talk to gresham after talking to you i said yeah yeah, yeah i know that's what a letdown <laughs> yeah it's really anticlimactic for them i realized but it was just, it was a real honor and, and just a, a pleasure to talk to these guys it, it takes a huge set of kahunas to to get up in front of the courts and to challenge anything like this i mean it's fantastic we need people like them to do it but I, I, it's got to be tough and I, well, kudos off to them for helping us preserve our rights. I mean, gosh. But if anybody should be big-headed about their accomplishments, it's these guys, and neither one are. Right. You yeah. tell them, hey, thanks to everything, and they're like, yeah, great, thanks. <laughs> I mean, they, they really are. They're just they're laid back. regular old people, and you, you talk to them, and all they want to do is talk about, okay, what are we doing next? How do we win? How do we? And one thing that they're both really good at is they would be killer at, like, 3D chess. Because they're <laughs> like working. Star sure. 27 moves ahead. Right. You know, uh, they're saying, okay, we're going to do this and then we're going to lose there and then we're going to move it over here and we're going to lose there. But we're setting up this other one. And then this case is going to set up these two other cases that we're going to file in other uh, states. Yeah. And That's... it's like you're going, wow. And when we see it come together, we go, well, yeah, that makes sense. And said, but we weren't seeing it five years ago. Yeah, they can, they can look down the road and know the path here. Yeah. Yeah, they're driving with HID beams going, you know. Yeah. The rest of us have got little bitty flashlights we're trying to see with. Yep. It's yep. pretty cool, really. Yeah, um, they, they do good. But, I mean, it, that also re- should reinforce why we help them financially because it does, that stuff doesn't come easy. It doesn't come cheap. No. Like, it's, you know, it's, and it's, superstars are, are are worth hanging on to. Well, and you guys know that I'm on the board of the uh, Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Mm-hmm. And so, as a result, I sit in on the board meetings of uh, Second Amendment Foundation I know how much it cost. It would just scare you to death. Yeah, well, they're and, not they're not for profit, right? Um, it turned out that way. <laughs> well, that no, aren't they structured that way? <laughs> yeah, they are. They're they're, they're non profit, uh, and they don't have the NRA's kind of money. They don't have that that kind of thing going for them. Right. They just do an awful lot with not a lot. It's just smart work. I mean, which is not to say they're not. You know, it's still a lot of money. We're cycling through a lot of money, but man, we. Sp- we spend a ton, and people say, well, could you take this case? Could you take that case? And it's interesting how they have to turn down some. We say, okay, that doesn't actually – it's worthwhile. And I get that for you it's important, but it doesn't move the ball forward on the grand scale. Right. And that's for really the cause, where they are. yeah. Yeah. And those are hard ones to do when you say, you know, yeah, man, I'd love to help you out, but uh, we just have limited resources. We can't do that one for you. Yep. So. You know, and that's just a sad reflection on the state of things where it costs so much to challenge what is ultimately often proven to be an unconstitutional law in the first to place. To start with, right. They, they Great should, point. They really should uh, be something on the books where they have to refund your... your well, you know, they did in Chicago. Well, yeah. yeah. Chicago had to kick back big money. Yeah. Was it like a million bucks yep, or something? just under, yep. You got, does yeah, that, not hardly. Does that fall into the category of tortious lawsuits? Is that the term? I don't know. Over I my think. head. I don't know. Tort just, law. I'll look up, up this week. I, I used to catch horses in the backyard, little big guys. You know. <laughs> Some snapping turtles, too. Yeah, that's right. Some of those things. Them big loggerheads. All right. Well, well, speaking of dinner, <laughs> yeah, let's get to you, it. you need to leave, don't yeah. you? With All food right, and guys. guns, I can't stick around. That's, that's it. We, we got to go shoot our dinner. <laughs> Daddy got us another possum. <laughs> uh, that's about all we can do here. Okay. Guys. So, all right. Thank you. And we will do it again next week uh, unless they actually find out where we are and the restraining orders come through. <laughs> Be good. See all you, right. Buddy. Thank you, guys. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk.